Audio Live. Hey, folks, it's Tuesday night. Welcome aboard to Murder Hobo Inc. Uh, Between the Rolls, our version of a talk show. I am producing tonight. Our normal producer is feeling under the weather, so if I screw up the uh, audio, uh, you know, it's on me. I, You know, why... why brush with success follow us on twitch follow us on twitter take a look at our youtube archive if you want to buy our crap it's down there tinyurl.com slash rpg swag if you want to hit us up on discord it's tinyurl.com mhobo inc discord uh give us a chat uh tell us what we're doing right what we're doing wrong tell us you want to have a seat on this panel or the games uh that's please we're tired of sitting here we're very tired i haven't been allowed to leave this garage in weeks <laughs> you know, i have no idea i don't know what my tuesday schedule is gonna bring but i may be not i may not be able to do this for a while i don't know i i think it's <laughs> thursday i'm not really sure uh Folks, uh, we, we've got uh, a recap on all of the shows that we did, all four of them, and then we're also going to get into a discussion on uh, playability factors, such as timing uh, and setting the pace. So before that, let's go ahead and uh, get the cast identified. Uh, first up, David. David, who are you and what do you do? Uh, my name is David, and uh, I'm a gamer, borderline writer, or just borderline. Uh, anyway, um, I've played in a couple of games with the uh, with the murder hobos, so I think I got a little insight into our. You got the tonight. dice. Yeah, got I got the dice. dice. You got the yeah. dice. You got the. Koozie. I got the dice and the koozie. Yeah, so. yeah. he's like real and shit. And I think uh, <laughs> Caitlin probably got hers today, maybe, yeah. and then uh, Heidi will get hers probably on Thursday. So you know, if you want some cheap swag. <laughs> Those are special. It says, fuck you, Heidi. <laughs> Love Kyle. <laughs> he he autographed it. Yeah. Uh, next up is Kyle. Kyle, who are you? And what do you do? Skip me. Skip, because uh, he's eaten. Uh, we'll skip to Carol. Carol, who are you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Hi, guys. I'm Kyle. Uh, I do a lot of writing. Uh, I do a lot of the work around here. Um, I, just, it. I mean, like 95% at least. 95%? Oh, I just like to let uh, the 5% of Frank show the most because <laughs> really he is the face of the show and has that seduction. I've got the seduction. <laughs> That's going to be a t shirt, dude. It's really going to be a t shirt. As soon as I get time. <laughs> Carol, uh, pardon the interruption. I know you are not used to that, and that was just unusual. Who I apologize. That was rude. My name is Carol, uh, the talked over one. Um, Thank you, Carol. So tonight we're... <laughs> right, hold on. <laughs> Kyle, I didn't even know you were doing that either. Although it was a we'll get to that when it's your turn to talk about it, Carol. <laughs> so, so I guess should I have to introduce myself? I mean, although if you've watched the show, you probably have seen me um, by this point. Uh, but hi, I'm Carol. I am a commissioned miniature painter, longtime gamer, sometime GM. I'm actually working up something that maybe I'll run on here if they let me. Um, I got a lot of work on done on it today. Well, I'm trying to see, Kyle, what did you do? Nothing. We're, we're giving encouragement. Now, hang on. I want a chair. Turn the volume up, folks. She's done talking. <laughs> uh, folks, let's go ahead and start on the recap. We'll, uh, we'll run through this pretty quick. Uh, I'll take first topic uh, just because that was how it was not in the script. No script. Uh, so uh, we started off our week here with eight, uh, episode 83. 83. 83 oh, fucking shit game shows. Uh, to be one. fair, we're doing like seven shows a week these days. <laughs> we're like share, for God's sake. Uh, episode 83 was entitled A Light in the Darkness, and it was Blake's turn to sit in the big chair, and he went ahead and controlled it. He told us it was going to be an adaptation, but he wouldn't let us know what it was. Uh, Tamlin, uh, Big Mike, 
uh, Rosemary and a uh, new player, Dan, were mm. all sitting in on this one. It was a six-level adventure. And it, as it turns out, spoiler alert, all of these gonna, are going to be spoiler alert. Uh, and it is on YouTube, so you can watch it there. Uh, it was Rocky Horror Picture Show. Uh, so uh, there, there were a few issues early on, uh, but the overall theme of the game was really enjoyed by everyone. Uh, anytime you do an adaptation, if the players get it, they're going to love it usually. Now, if you did it with somebody, and I'll, I'll throw myself on the fire here, never seen Rocky Horror Picture Show. Had no clue that's what he was going what? for. Come yeah, on, I'm, you call I'm, yourself I'm, a Generation um, Xer? I have never, ever it, seen, never, it. never sat through it. Um, I, I've seen everybody go into the movie theater with it. Never watched it. So as we were going through the scenario, total blank. i Fuck it. it was like it was like Ashley figuring out halfway through That's that it that was that uh, that Jesus that story. Oh my God! <laughs> you, 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 you are not making the point. You are not making me want to go and see this. Uh, but as it turned out, uh, it started to run a little bit long, so we had to cut it kind of short. Uh, yeah, we did get to watch the Time Warp dance by the cultists, uh, but actually dealing with uh, Professor. Frankenfurter, is that who it is? Professor? Yeah. Or, or did they make it professor for the game? We didn't get to him. Uh, oh. So uh, they did manage to kill a shitload of people doing the time warp uh, <laughs> because they were uh, doing the calculations on crashing the chandelier. Uh, everybody had good things to say about it. Uh, again, they, they, I, there was an issue with the timing early on and uh, it was actually Blake's idea to come up with this show, but he couldn't make it tonight. So uh, if you can, uh, flip over to uh, tinyurl.com slash mhoboarchive and take a look at our YouTube channel. It's there along with these next three. Uh, well, by the way, Frank, can you like make playlists for that? Because it is getting hard to sort through all of the crap that's on that channel now. You know what? I'm just going to say two things. Doge and boots. Fuck yeah, everything are, else. Everything those else. Those are the only two that matter. Everything else is shit. It's just a, and if you see a green background for the campaign, fucking go right by that crap. That, <laughs> that is a toilet seat right there. Uh, next one up is Kyle. Kyle ran this one, and it was episode 84, Batshit Mine. Kyle, oh, tell us about bat it. Batshite Mine. Batshite okay. Mine. You got it right the first time around when you sent it out. And, oh, oh, it was great. I half the time I don't know what to call the shows. Like uh, Murder on the Hobo Express that came that, that was good. at the that time was of the one. show, which is well before that it was the Eberron Train Robbery, and then it became Murder on the Hobo Express. That was so much better. And, well, see, you always say you had to rush through it, so I'm not sure if you do spell check or not. So I I'm don't like, know. I'm like, is, uh, is he spelling this wrong on purpose? I'm or? a musician. I can count to four, and that's it. <laughs> Wait, you can't count to six or eight? One and two, two and, and three, three and four. four. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Come on, there's that. One E and two E and one E and two E and. All right, that's the music humor of the night. Uh, so yeah, I ran uh, another because I have a lot of backups at the moment. Uh, this one called Bat Shite Mine. Uh, I originally got this idea from WebDM, actually. Um, I don't know if David ever caught that episode. I heard this and then I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to make an adventure around that. Uh, and essentially the party had to reclaim a specialized uh, spell component of bat shit from a group of orcs who were looking to uh, create um, flame eaters, which are a type of bat that eats fire. Um, everything kind of bogged down when they decided to be noisy as all get out and send head wound Larry first. <laughs> and they paid, f well, Head wound Larry paid for it with a bunch of arrows. I'm, I'm so got sorry. Fucked early. That's not what By I went. both sides. <laughs> From both sides. <laughs> That's right. Didn't two of the players end up hitting you with arrows? Or, David or, and or, or Caitlin? That, that guy right there. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. 
Uh, but they ran, uh, encountered a lot of bats and orcs. Uh, they didn't uh, get through the whole episode. Unfortunately, I write too well, too thorough. Too and I also made them too low levels in this case. Ever yeah. since my first time running one of these guys, I uh, what I've learned so far is it's easy to make an enemy tougher. It is less harder to make the party better <laughs> and make the enemies go easier on them. And I did that a little bit, but I could have done it a little bit better. But I think, honestly, stepping you guys up two levels before that had even started would have turned out well. Um, I still would have oh, yeah. died. <laughs> you still would have died, yes. No, with everyone who was trying to kill you, yeah. I don't know. I, you may not have. You would have had that many more hit points. You probably would have called... <laughs> In the, in the so, first so David would have had to shoot me twice as often, probably. Yeah. yeah, and he would have had the opportunity to do so. I feel like. Yeah. Hey, I learned a valuable lesson. Don't try to cut a mimic off your friend's face. <laughs> <laughs> Although, literally, that was one of my. I, you know what, Cal? I really like the said between the week before when we had the the marionettes. And mm-hmm. this week we had the mimics. You yeah, come I think up I with- died in both of those. <laughs> <laughs> you did. To be fair, one of them, actually both of them were Carol's fault because she was the one who blew up the train and she was the second person to say yes. No. Hit me with everything you had. I was the first person to say yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so you're right. I guess it was my fault. It's all my fault. Everything yeah. is all my fault. Especially around here. Now we've yep. covered that. Mm-hmm. Uh, good recap. Uh, next up is uh, episode 85, Get the Band Back Together, the campaign episode. For that, we have selected Carol since she played in that one and did not kill me, which would have been rather difficult, but, you know, it's Carol, so you know, we, we all <laughs> always She would have found an artifact to kill the DA. That's right. The campaign <laughs> died that That's day. the end of the campaign. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Actually, I figured Frank was going to kill me after what happened last Sunday with blowing up the A benevolent DM does not kill his players. He lets his players kill themselves. Oh, actually, my whole view is that death is boring because to send pain is far more fun to inflict than death. The pain just keeps coming, that's all. Uh, so yeah, it was. I I enjoyed this episode because we finally get everyone back together. Highlight flipping Luya. I also really enjoyed this episode because of what happened in Fulton with Minis. Um, you may have to, you may be able to explain it better than I am because this was your whole um, plot there. But it feels like uh, basically the party has all been completely set up, and actually, it's not just that. It's about outsiders there too isn't it there it seemed like um they set up uh i'm trying to remember exactly what happened i remember he was went to the beach and i remember it totally devolved in this whole thing where there was a uh, the magistrate gets assassinated by what was it the what was the assassin a widow half elf half elf <coughs> half elf you know kind of like ernie yeah, exactly. I feel like, yeah, I feel like um, we are being set up. Or, or wait, wait, wait. Ernie's a half elf? I thought no. he was a wood elf. No, Ernie's a full wood elf, not a half elf. Is he? Yeah. yeah. This guy's thought a was a wood elf. elf. <laughs> this, guy's, this guy's a half wood elf. He told we're half elves. That's kind of funny on this. Well, to be fair, you were the one who said half elf. Ernie was a wood elf from the very beginning. Yeah. So I don't know why you me. decided to change the middle. I'm not half elf, half some other race. I'm two brands. Oh, that's why. I I knew there was a half elf in the group somewhere. It's Carol. (laughs) Two good things wrapped up in one. (laughs) Funny thing, yeah, she's Taryn is half high elf and half wood elf. And I play with wood elf staffs because you can't make uh, half high elf, half wood elf. But I've always always run her that way. She was two different races of elves, so she's a little more exotic looking. In my setting, that's not it's a special. Totally- elf. Yeah, Fenestra twerks. All you do is tell <laughs> shitty jokes. True. <laughs> so um, get on, Carol. Come on. 
We've got okay. time. All right, so at Stave Kyle. <laughs> So, I mean, I think I, I, you know, I am in charge tonight. I can mute her, her camera and blank it out, too. So, <laughs> are you finished? I was going to say, you, the, uh... <laughs> you want me to finish? You want me to keep going or keep, no? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. All right. So, so I said, basically, <clears throat> Manise got run out of town on a rail. What are you doing, Chris? <laughs> I see you. <laughs> Stop doing that. That's not helping. <clears throat> uh, Denise got run out of town in a rail, or flew out of town with, with guards shooting him. Uh, the, the heroes were all looked at some... <laughs> This guy, Kyle, kept, every time they kept saying, please, my guess is what the big dad is. And I mean, if for all you out there, Frank confirmed it with me via email that that was indeed what it is, but if he could, it's just very <laughs> <laughs> By the way, everybody, is the full horse for the apocalypse. Yeah. Oh, there we God. go. Finally. <laughs> she finally got that spit out. Hey, hey, hey. <sighs> Every time I said you wanted this to be more serious, so I tried to take a bit more of a serious, dramatic bent when I was presenting who they were, and basically Kyle's over there frigging doing the countdown that I didn't even see because... See, I, th I thought more serious was me shoving an undead army up Blake's ass. Yeah, that's no, the, that that's was a serious perfect. route. <laughs> and what you, and what you did in um, and what you did in Fulton I was serious. I was on oh, the yeah, the Fulton. So obviously, General Io was that his name? Mm -hmm. He set up to have the magistrate murdered. That is think. my guess so far. That is just. Uh, Hold on, hold on. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> there, there is no evidence present that would substantiate oh, obviously, that. Obviously, obviously. I, I, it was definitely the half elf working. He wouldn't in be good. In tandem with uh, Eric Cockra. Well, you know, when you find out that the uh, General Io was responsible for purging half elves, maybe you'll change your tune. Maybe the magistrate was an innocent victim. Hold on. Or was <laughs> she? <laughs> Yeah, there was that whole bit about the undead, the army of the dead coming to Rourke and basically meeting up with Bushmills troops. Uh, we don't even know if Bushmills survived, but we all got the fuck out of town because that was a bit above our pay Because <laughs> heroes. <laughs> yeah, but the reality is we have to put the evil the box killed doing that fight. We're not going to be around to save the freaking world priorities man and the priority is we have to get the evil back where it came from because you know a bear apparently <clears throat> let that evil out into the world um but we went apparently and, did and he so did 100 percent. i thought it was so, carol that let the evil out though i wasn't even that was the game. fact That's yeah she was there uh, she was in the there. beginning uh-huh even playing the game you know strangely playing. enough when ernie turns into a bear there's just like a tint of fire in his eyes with that one it was a bear telling a bad joke and then it just knocked the box and <laughs> smashed it it was strange but that's pretty good because i wasn't even in the game at that point in fact i didn't even watch the show at that point or Ouch. Jeez. <laughs> rude carol kyle right. spread your legs so she can get a better kick to the groin Jesus yeah, yeah. clearly God. I didn't watch you dumb shits back then. Really? <laughs> well, I, My feelings are hurt. Actually, truth be told, I didn't actually know about the show back then. It wasn't until wow. Chris Chris advertised it. So, you know, got to get the word out. It's a great show. But, yeah, but that, yeah. so we got Perpetua back because Perpetua was running ahead of the Undead Army. And then... Um, Maniz contact us by that awesome little crystal you had and we met up in by Battle Keep. And we are playing, I believe next time we're going to assault it and try to get uh, the I'm first Assault Maniz, yes. You probably are because if I recall you um, I did try to punch him and Frank was very well in not letting that happen. <laughs> <laughs> one does I'm... what one must. That's pacing. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, we last... just need these, though, man. We get we we need our healer because I I heard about the nine bajillion space fighters that are in that place that we're gonna have to tackle. Mm -hmm. Nah, they're probably all gone. David, yeah, uh, you're taking the last show, and that was <laughs> episode 86, Extraction at Tartan Shores, run by the greatest DM ever oh, to sit at please. the table. Is that him jacking himself off? Yes. Yeah, no. That, that's me holding the press conference. It's actually, conference. you got to get it down a lot <laughs> yeah, lower and a lot right. closer. <laughs> Yeah, it was you only the greatest need the show ever, and ever there. Yeah. A lot of people have tried, but I'm way better at it. And I, I knew how to play this game long before Gary Gygax wrote it. So, you know, I was yeah. there early. He asked me about it. I was six. You're saying that old, huh? That's no, right. I, that was actually a motion to Eric called Justice Man's dwelling. <laughs> So, oh, but y'all yep. took it that way. So I was just like, <laughs> let him run with it. Is that Eric called two holes in the ass, Justice Man? <laughs> right. Courtesy of Heidi. Oh, man, I swear. <laughs> well, ex <laughs> Escape from uh, Tartan Shores. Oh, my God. I wanted to create a character named Snooky so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> but, uh, okay. Escape from Tartan Shores. Basically, <clears throat> Uh, we were at sea. Uh, there was a storm. Ship got lost. Next thing you know, an admiral's rolling up to our ship, looking for at intrepid adventurers to do a rescue mission to find his son, who is whose ship is missing and presumed uh, either thrashed on the rocks or just gone. Anyway, uh, so. <laughs> Uh, my character, Marius, uh, Scott's character, Eric All Justice Man, yeah. Carol's character, Luna Hades, oh and God. what was Heidi's character's name? Maggie? Maggie? I know it was Maggie. Yeah, I can't remember her last name, like Blackthorn or something like that? Mm -hmm. Something like I, that. You think I'd remember, but no. She's yeah, you think rogue. of that a lot. Yeah, she was a rogue. So, you know, of course, we get roped into it because that's the whole purpose of the episode. <laughs> but we go on this mission. What? We bite. We bit the pot hook. Yep. So anyway, well, that's what you're supposed to do. That's so right. we so, so we begin our mission and we're exploring different reefs. Uh, first reef we explore, we run into what is it? A sea ogre or mm -hmm. troll? Marrow. What's it called? A marrow. And yeah, uh, a yeah, little battle <laughs> ensued. Uh, you had two paladins at that time inflicting divine smite. So it did not. It did not go well for, for the, the marrow. Um, you know, so uh, after that reef, we, uh, after we left, we ended up picking up something that was following us. So we made our way to a second reef where we saw another shipwreck. So anyway, exploring the reef, uh, trying to remember exactly what happened. Crabs. Uh, crabs. That's it. We got a case of crabs. Uh, uh, as it turns out, the thing that was following us was something called uh, Nixie. And uh, yeah, we it's needed to Nixie. Nixie. Uh, it's first edition. First edition. Yeah, what is a Nixie, though? Real it, fast. Remember uh, who, was, who, who was the guy in Dallas? <laughs> Not Larry Hagman, oh, the oh, other guy. Oh, uh, Patrick Duffy. He, uh, <laughs> last, uh, the man from Atlantis. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, that was it. He was Aquaman. Only David was Aquaman. Yeah, I was Aquaman for that. Okay. He was Aqua Kid. And then yeah. David was Aquaman. Right. Uh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. He was a reef reefer, so he was awesome. Yeah, he was a great character. Frank MP Frank did a great job. Wasn't well, a dick. Wasn't a dick, yeah. Well no. that that's because she had somebody that could speak his language. Otherwise yeah. poor Nixie probably would have ended up dead or something. But uh <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, turned out well. We got a we got an ally, Reef Reeferton, steered us in the right direction. His only currency he wanted uh, in return was crabs. So there were plenty of them. Carol got got assaulted by a bunch of them. Oh, God damn it! Stuck to my ear. <laughs> so anyway, we end up exploring a wreck there. Uh, Reef directs us to it, warns us against it because they're 
there's spirits in there that he advises us not to mess with. So uh, encounter ensued. We end up do, uh, doing the encounter. Maggie ends up stabbing Ericol in the ass, you know, not once, twice. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> it? So, so we ended up moving on to another reef. In the meantime, our, our uh, long boat was drifting out to sea. Sharks had, had pulled it loose. Uh, fortunately, there was a, a member of our crew that could actually speak with aquatic life. No, 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 no. So, no, I was not a min-maxer on this episode at all. So, uh, <laughs> so we moved to a final reef. That's where the big boss encounter happened. Uh, we find our, our, our missing uh, Admiral's son, uh, large encounter on the, on, the reef, on the reef. What was it? Was it more marrow and the, the big uh, boss? Merman. Merman. Yeah, merfolk. Merfolk. So... Uh, battle ensued, um, and uh, yeah, we ended up. Captain Rory really got him. his shit pushed in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god! But it, but it, it it ended well, which I mean, for the past couple of episodes that it, that I've been on personally have not ended well. <laughs> so, but uh, basically, it was great. Scott was great with his character. Eric Hall, Justice Man. I've never heard the, of the spell command being used to command somebody to masturbate before, but oh my god, that was comedy gold. No, so, ever since he played with um, Finestra. Finestra, yeah. Eric Hall's gone down a dark, dark path. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah, that, that whole paladin routine of his mm. it dropped pretty quickly <laughs> my, my biggest regret was when rory hit him in the face i didn't make him talk normally again i know i, really I know that one. I yeah. blew it. now does he does he talk because he has a hair lip or or yes. is it just a speech impediment because he got hit too hard that's a hair lip but every time i hit him too hard i let him talk normally <laughs> Which we did that when he was nice. playing with Finestra and the abandoned right. city, and that was that was kind of a good one, yeah. Because yeah. oh he's God. like, "Oh well, hello. I'd like to go ahead and." <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> oh my! Oh my! <laughs> that was just like flipping a switch for Scott. <laughs> I would like to go ahead and and go ahead and protect those who need it. <laughs> he has such a great voice too. So. No. Nice. Oh my God. So that was episode 86, folks. So. And episode 86 had a lot of choices. I gave you guys a lot yeah. of choices. They could have gone to the shore. They could have gone to the reefs. So yeah. either way, they're going to get... Trying to rub that in my face, Frank. <laughs> you had a game that ended on time with lots of choices. Uh, well, there was still a lot more game to be had. So oh, yeah. that's, yeah. Our, that's yeah. our subject for tonight. And that applies to you too, Kyle. So yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. What? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> So there you have it, folks. Uh, go ahead. Again, tinyurl.com, mhoboinks, or tinyurl.com slash archive takes you right to our YouTube channel. Uh, as Kyle has pointed out, there is a significantly large amount of content on there because uh, we're the greatest group ever. <laughs> uh, but there is a lot of content in there, so sift through it. <coughs> Boots, I told you. Uh, you'll find games that you really enjoy. Uh, but uh, yeah, with with running so many more games, uh, a lot of us have noticed. Okay, well, how do you keep the pace going? How do you go ahead and get it done? Uh, and there are a lot of different aspects on here. And I, I know Kyle's like, oh, you're rubbing it in my face. Uh, no, not at all. Uh, it's the difference between games, and, and that's primarily what we want to talk about because I think that's rather significant. So uh, pacing in a game, and maybe I'm wrong. We'll see if the panel agrees or not. For me, the DM's second primary job, first being writing the scenario, second is they're responsible for controlling the pace of the game as they see fit. If they want to rush forward, if they want to do the party or let the party do a lot of thinking and role play, that's completely up to the DM. It's not right. It's not wrong. It's how the DM wants to run the game. 
uh, opinions. Uh, we'll start with David. Um, well, I, I, I don't know where to begin with this, but uh, you're here wrong, I go. Frank. You're just full of shit. You're just full of shit, Frank. <laughs> uh, no, no, I think it, it boils down to what the DM's <laughs> objectives are and how much material he wants to, he or she wants to uh, cover uh within the the time span of the game time is of the essence i mean time is your real dictator for how this goes because um you know you could have you know a full full adventure planned out and you think you have enough time for it but players are players man they're gonna play and you know i mean that they, they will totally pardon the term shit wreck a, a dungeon master's plan so uh i you know, it's uh, and I think we did that to Kyle, unbeknownst. You know, because uh, Kyle's had it coming. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> hmm. I don't think you shit wrecked anything. Uh, well, no, no, I'm not saying shit wrecked anything, but uh, in, in terms of that, but as terms as probably not moving at the pace that that you know you would have liked, I'm pretty sure that happened. You know. Am, am I wrong? I mean, would you like to have seen the group pro pro progress a little further than what we got, or am I wrong? Um, yeah, you did have a point where um, we kind of stagnated, and that and that's the biggest problem. Yeah, is when things when players start doing their own things, they get lost uh, in the role playing or the mm -hmm. just that's their character. Well, I think the yeah. very first uh, adventure I ran, which was um, the most dangerous game, where I had the party being hunted down by um, gifts. Gifts, right? The the, 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 the yeah, yeah. Oh, not that the gifts. Sounds... The gifts. Oh, yeah. The hippo people. The I'm gift. Sorry. Yeah, the hippopotamus. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, I was going to run that one, but Frank was like, "No, nah, we need moon material." Anyway. Um, <laughs> I no, I thought that that I would, but that that's the thing. I'm I, I'm the neophyte here, so yeah, I would have loved that. So, that see, which is why we just need to um, rerun some of the old stuff there, Frank, and with new players. Uh, I agree. Um, sorry, um, but with that one, there was definitely a lot more talking, a lot of players interacting and being like, "Okay, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this." I was kind of expecting that more from you guys. Um, but I ran into the issue of putting one of the most dangerous things in a D and D setting, a locked door. And you guys <laughs> became obsessed over that. It's like, oh, it's locked. It's not going to open guys. There's the, like keep a, going that way. Yeah. Keys at the other end. Fucking water feature, Kyle. <laughs> yeah. Water feature. yeah, no, that's the, that's number two. <laughs> the locked door will actually do damage to the party if they try to do something oh, like man. blow it open <laughs> i've seen dms use that that so many times it's just mm. like the locked door yeah i mean you could actually wipe out a party with a locked door oh absolutely <laughs> that's why i kind of wanted you down there at fourth level but then as i started putting all the monsters together um I mean, we we got to the one monster for yours, and it it was the just, giant bat. I think was the, the giant bat, yeah. and that yeah. that that was that that was almost a you know a TPK right there. The was, first time around, yeah, and yeah, the I second was, time yes. around. <laughs> one point away, buddy. I I flew and flew up with me, and I have one freaking point. And and I was the one left standing. I had with like a room half, full of orcs coming after yeah, you. Yeah, and Misty stepped the hell out of there. Yep. See you, folks. <laughs> yeah. Um, so honestly, if we're gonna talk about something I personally learned, mm -hmm. um, and maybe this doesn't really pertain to pacing. Well, the whole locked door. I never really thought about it until just now. The water feature and then really pissing off the players and having enemies run away and that stalled you guys uh, a little bit i felt like too um gosh you guys mm. Mm -mm. uh yeah no um no and really with controlling the flow and writing that adventure realizing how much time you have to play in that was probably going to be better for a four 
Um, and I fell into the new DM trap of no, no room can be empty. There is going to be an enemy here and I'm going to make it, oh, he's going to be perched on top of this cliff here. And if they have to run up there, they have to make an acrobatics check or they're going to slip and fall in bat shit. So either they have to range attack them or they have to be acrobatic jumping around. And No, uh, uh, what I'm learning very quickly is you can do that, but it's a long session and it's okay to have an empty yeah. room. Yeah. And I personally, as a DM, like to have things fight realistically, flee when they are about to be beaten down. But honestly, I'm finding players hate that. And not every encounter has to be something interesting. It can be easy to help speed things along, for one, but because players want something they can kill easy sometimes. Yeah. Well, like that brings me players. up. <laughs> like other players, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I mean, ideally, uh, if I had gone with the mimics, and I probably should have kept them in and gotten rid of the first trap, because I think if you all went in pro health, full level, the mimics would have been a very easy fight, if dangerous. And that would have been a nice win for you guys to start off the whole thing. With. Right. Well, in the research that I did about pacing and all that, one of the things that the, they agreed on unanimously is that for for each encounter, you want to have it to about three to five rounds. Anything longer than that, it just kind of, you know, it it, it 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 wipes out your pacing, you know. And the problem with that is bad rolls on the part of the players, good rolls on the part of the enemies, and learning how to adapt to those rolls and yeah, that's probably a good two to three round encounters. Yeah, you had so much content that we didn't get to that a two or three round encounter, I mean, that would have been perfect. We would have just yeah. moved right on. Yeah, but, there was a point where I should have been like, But the environmental like, yeah, no, hazard is dead. <laughs> Carol, well, you kind of did it. Yeah. yeah sorry, Carol, go ahead. What? What? I get to talk? So, I'm sorry. I got so excited about talking about what went wrong because I like to obsess over the bad things I do. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, know. I mean, it was still it was still a great. Um, even though we yeah we went what an hour over no half hour over, it was still a really good scenario. You just we, write long scenarios. You you were I do. Yeah. You're a very uh, good convention writer. Yours is perfect for a four hour con plot. You but heard you know, this first. Carol is going to run one of my adventures at the next but, convention she's at. I'm going to send that over to you right quick. Enjoy that. All right. Uh, but yeah, but most of the time at conventions, I'm busy running the mini painting table, and I and with and my now dude, running my adventure. Carol, you are a woman are of you many pay hats. Do what? I'll run your adventure. Oh and man. My, you know, uh, you know but, your game is running long when your producer says, "I'm going to bed, guys." Here, yeah, yeah, off right. <laughs> um, but to go straight with what had Frank had said, and I kind of skipped around it earlier, with the murder on the Hobo Express, the first part of that was really DM controls the pacing there, and I could have had you guys make a roll and say, "Okay, this is the information you find out," or if I was like, "Oh, hey, I think this person's really going to find something interesting." or maybe the other players will, let's actually do the R-O-L-E, which takes more time, but you can add suspension, tension, breaking into a, um, a heavily guarded train station in that scenario. Yeah. And it is really on top of the DM to figure out what's important in order to make everything or a good portion of the adventure, the whole idea of it, fit into the story. Hey, Hey, you know what? I never actually answered the, the actual question, though, which was, what was that? The, the second most important function of a GM is pacing. I, I, I do agree with that, but I also think there's more to it than that. One of the suggestions I put for the film role, you just bring a car from like... <laughs> this is how the DM controls pacing. <laughs> Although hey, it didn't... Kyle. I've got this handy dandy little hourglass. <laughs> so I, yeah, right, but I, I right wanted to click for you. And... Mute, right? That's what I do. Right click and mute. Got it. <laughs> well, I would actually answer that. So you said, but the, I also thought, um, also, 
determining the tone of the game and such is also equally important. <laughs> but you're not wrong, especially when, like in a campaign to me, uh, time is not quite so important because you're just going from week to week to week telling a story, telling one long story. <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. Are, are you talking about in campaign? Yeah. Okay. I don't okay. I, I just I, I I missed. I was distracted reading something. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you said the sand, and this wasn't running out fast enough. It takes like thirty seconds. Um, but. Uh, no, to me, the campaign, it's not as important because it's a, it's especially the best campaigns to me are the sandbox ones where the party has almost as much agency uh, as the DM is to what goes on. I really enjoy this. But when you're at a convention or you're at a store that has a closing time and they're giving you the evil eye because you're not done at 10 o'clock and they want to go home, then timing obviously is very important. And you do need to you do need to make sure. It, it, when I do it, I try to look at the adventure and figure out about how long I want to spend on each part. Um, so if it's a fight, if it's a, if it's a higher level too, higher level fights usually go longer than you know the lower level ones. I agree. It's a lot more things you're trying to figure out. Um, although D&D is not as bad because, to me, the, a lot of the abilities are kind of scaled back from, like, Math Finder. <laughs> math Finder. Finder? Oh, my God. I have to, like, I need, like, a freaking advanced math degree. I like it. I, li I like the math, but you do kind of need it. You do need to uh, be able to really add things up. Um, but that's that's the thing is that usually I do is I figure out how long I want to go. And I do keep half an eye on the clock. To make sure that I'm staying within time and that I'm going to finish. And they think, well, of course, that most of my experience is running Pathfinder uh, scenarios at conventions and I said at, at the store. And yeah, I said, I, I mean, they have optional encounters that it, and they literally put in there, if you have X amount of time left, you, know, if you don't have this amount of time left, then drop it. And most of the time I just drop it anyways because. <laughs> Because it's like that's another thing. I had a prayer. Prayer didn't have time to prepare. But I do. I do agree in a way that yeah, it is a very important role to try to. It's also keeping people on track and not letting digressions uh, sink your game too. As far as I'm concerned, I think that's all part of it. Now you bring up a good point uh, with the players portion. Uh, how about this to the panel? I. I say the dm controls the pace but if you have a player who they either don't know their character they've got too many options because they're too high a level or yeah. they're glued to their phone or they can't focus very well huh? what, what would be your solution <laughs> to that in game not pulling them aside on their own and saying, hey, I think we got a problem. How would you go ahead and resolve that issue during a game? And we'll start with Kyle this time. Uh, what I did on the Batshite Mind Takeover was... Kill me, yeah, got Count it. Carol down. <laughs> you did not which count. only... Oh, I did. <laughs> Shut up! No, I got this! <laughs> Uh, to be fair, that was my fault, though, because I gave her an extra level in the middle of a fight, which was a terrible idea, but I thought maybe people had read my message earlier when I said, hey, have the fifth level ready to go. I read it. I, I was get, pulling I didn't arrows get out of my back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it, so. Ah, yeah. No. If you guys had gotten to one end of the cavern, I was going to be like, yeah, level up, guys. Do it right now. All right. Let's keep going the other way now. Yeah. But Kyle, you got to realize when you're using like D and D Beyond, it's not just written. It takes about uh, thirty seconds to level up your character. The hardest thing is probably picking spells. Thirty that was, whole seconds. That, that, that was not. To be honest, that was not the delay. The problem was is that there was too many, <laughs> there were too many things that I needed to do. To find out which one of those fifty things I needed to do to try to save the party? And the most vulnerable thing 
That was the problem. That she, she, I, didn't, she didn't even notice it. You missed it, Carol. You missed it again. No, but that's right. I'm not paying attention to Nina. Nina. There you go. See, He's got if your cards. players don't pay attention. <laughs> well, you know, I'll, I'll buy that. I'll buy that as uh, an idea. Uh, David, what do you think? Time challenges. I think that'll do it. Have put put things uh, on a timer. You know. Elaborate. Exactly. Go. <laughs> Quickly. Come I on. think a time cha uh, challenge will, will do it. Say you've got so many whatever till this happens. So like, like, like speed chess almost. Kind of. Yeah. Okay. Now hey, I, you're picking I, the lock, and the guard's coming around the corner. Gotta yeah. Go, go, go! What are you so, going to do? Are you yeah, going to keep yeah. the lock? Or are you going to jump out the window? And now I, I like both of those examples. The only problem is is. Carol and I think both of you have pointed out is once you get to high level, uh, and that's why the majority of the games I run are lower level because you guys have less options to pick from. You, you know, it's pretty easy. When I run six level games, it's just like uh, page eleven of my spell book. Uh, I'm gonna upcast this. It's like, oh my god! I, how many Good dice and do I roll? It's like, <laughs> no. So I was I was getting character paralysis on uh, the episode I was in uh, with Kana going to hell and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were what sixth level? Six level. Sixth but, level or ninth level? Oh, I no, thought sorry, you guys were up level. there. Yeah, you. No, we weren't Kena. tenth level. We weren't tenth. In the uh, hell? Yeah, yeah. You, you were, yeah, 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 you were tenth in Cana and ninth on uh, Phoenix. Oh, right. okay. Right. Well, well. Anyway, I had taken Ritual Caster, so when I'm creating my character, oh, I'm gonna have this, 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 this. Yeah, you're this. freezing to death in Cana when you do that. <laughs> I had Liamin's tiny hut, so that would have solved the problem. But I was just like, I better not cast that. Frank would think I'm metagaming too much. Right. <laughs> so. You can cast it. I'm pretty sure a fire giant or a frost giant will crash through that. Or Mestistopheles fucking lands. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that is why I do not like the high level games, but with uh, Kyle's planar challenge, and I think we discussed this on one of the other games, you cannot do low level in another plane. You're just asking mm -hmm. to get uh, TPK and I, I really do hate the TPKs but uh, yeah I, I like nice low level yeah. adventures you guys have maybe four or five things you can do it's real easy to keep track of everybody stays focused because again the threat of death is real so it's like Jesus Christ <laughs> <laughs> so that, that and that I mean that's just my two cents but yeah I think keeping the players not really the PCs but the players focused is always going to help uh and yeah. as carol's pointed out in a campaign you know the long-running campaign uh we've made a habit of uh, i'm gonna go left and i'm gonna go right and fuck frank and you know he's gonna have to <laughs> juggle this bullshit and it's like okay but we're not moving towards the goal <laughs> gonna go this way right here <laughs> soon well <laughs> i mean <DNA>. from <laughs> <laughs> I get a definite sense now, especially with what you've thrown out there, that I think there's going to be a bit more focus on trying to solve this. Well, I, I don't think any of you liked being a, alone, per se. I know Ernie and Kyle were together, but I don't think any of you really enjoyed it because I think the reality of getting your head lopped off was there and it's like ah, let's, and that's why I let it linger on a little bit more it's like let's teach him a lesson <laughs> let's be dickhead I didn't DM. learn anything <laughs> <laughs> and I would have been I was I wanted to be together from the friggin first time I popped on that show wish join shit <laughs> <laughs> let's see which one piles up first <laughs> I'm really glad you did give me an NPC to uh, to help because I am not a fight. You know, bards are not fighty characters. Well, Although I regret that when Taryn comes down with the play because she had it. Yeah, the only one. Well, and actually, Manise still hasn't spilled the beans. But I gave Blake the old lady. Thank God he didn't fucking try and kill her because she would have yeah. really nailed him. I gave you Cola and. Uh, Kyle and Ernie were together. Manise's yeah. backstory, uh, I think, is better than what I wrote about General Io. Uh, and 
once once he decides on if he's going to share it, uh, I'll let him share it. If he doesn't want to bother and he just wants me to send it to you, I'll send it to you. But the backstory of Meniz, <laughs> oh, it was a masterpiece. Uh, his story really got fleshed out. And that was only because Chris couldn't make it those two episodes. Uh, but, yeah, I didn't want to leave you guys completely hanging because, I, I mean, after Blake ditched the old lady, uh, I perceived, maybe incorrectly, but I perceived that the sense of uh, danger was a smidge much, especially when he was playing with the flail snail and the stone giant. Um, yeah. So, you know, it was just, come on, let's, let's move the story along. But, and, but that is the difference between a campaign, a convention, and a one-shot. Although you brought up something interesting right there, too. Uh, you still Drink, do Scott. Drink, Scott. <laughs> you know you're watching. So the, thing, so you, the interesting thing that just occurred to me was when you said you do still want your story along even in a campaign. You don't want it to stagnate. You don't want it to be boring. And the, uh, one of the things you mentioned, too, I saw on your list was the podcast. And I, th I think, truth be told, being on a podcast, it, it makes me more focused because I know there are people watching us. And mm -hmm. they're not going to want to watch us talk about, digress 9,000 times about this, that, and the other thing. So I definitely stay very focused. And I think it's actually been helping me in my games at home, too, stay, to learn to stay more focused here. Um, so, yeah, that's a good thing. But I think you still do, I think, right, even though... You don't have the time constraint like a one shot does. Mm -hmm. You still do want your story to move along. So pacing still does kind of matter. It just maybe so guys no start streaming your games and your players are going to focus the shit up and start moving your game along. I'll bet you will. I'll stress, bet baby. Stress. They will not. I'm David, what do you think? <laughs> huh? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm playing Plants vs. Zombies. Uh, Leave me alone. I was on my phone texting and not paying attention. Yeah. yeah. And I wasn't even on the M Hobo Inc. Discord. So. Well, the, the thing is, is, you know, like I come from a writing background in college with playwriting, and they tell you, man, keep the exposition to a minimum. You know, it all has to be, you know, the meat and potatoes, you know, exposition is just, it's just lip service. You're just talking. And uh, I think that's a trap some DMs kind of fall into sometimes, but maybe not. I could be wrong. What do you mean the meat and potatoes and the exposition? Uh, the, the, the trap is the exposition. The meat and potatoes is uh, focusing your players or, or focusing your audience uh, you, you know, in on that. exposition. X P. Oh. <laughs> I, th Got I would it. think okay. you would be good with expose, <laughs> Kyle. Uh. <laughs> uh, not as good as Tamlin. That's that's, that's what I'm finding out. That, that, that's you know, true. I thought I was good at being naked, and then Tamlin came. Kyle's out. butt crack is number two. I thought you I was a good murder hobo, you, but hey. then Caitlin came along. <laughs> I thought hey, it was a crazy game. GM, and then Heidi, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got to tell you one thing. Dropping trowel like that for him, for Tamlin, made the audience and the players participate. <laughs> <laughs> Seven out of ten, baby. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, obviously, like all of our other topics, I think we can go on all night about the different yeah. aspects of it. Uh, and it's, it's really hard to just condense it into 30 minutes. You know, you got to stick to the meat and potatoes. But uh, right. I, I, I like the fact that Blake brought it up because I know he was – I think he was curious about how uh, his scenario could have gone differently uh, – eliminating the first episode and everybody agreed that it was a solid concept uh and kyle of course has had some reservations but honestly it oh, no. I, every I, time every yeah. time i go back and i watch it three times and i dig into my shit and i'm like oh this is where i fucked up <laughs> that's where the numbers spike up on mine <laughs> but that that is how you learn yeah you, you watch it because you can't you can't change what you did i mean you can you oh, know, i can't I've already got it written down in the notes uh, for the heist. You make the group stay together for the planning stages, speed it yeah. up, and uh, that would actually help that part. 
it was only supposed to be a 45 minutes long. I didn't have a clock to actually watch. Normally I do, but there is one on the computer. I just watched and I'm like, oh shit, why did I say 10 days? I should have made it three. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long lead time. Um, I mean, we were, oh, you wanted to talk about Blake's though. Uh, you're right. It, I loved Blake's. I love the Blake's. I, I loved his idea. I love the fact. I love the um, using um, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Although I've seen it once, so, and it was a while ago, so some of the references go over my head too. Um, it's I'm actually sure. interested in watching that. I'm going to watch it this time. But as I said, the one thing I, I suggested was maybe just have the cart. Just it's a heavy rainstorm, like it is. It doesn't have to be a ele elemental fight. They could just break down right right outside, and there's the tower, and you're pouring rain. What are you going to do? You know, in the middle of the night, you're going to go for that tower, and then you can get right to the interesting shit immediately. Because what was going on in there to me? That was when. It, to me, that whole um, that scenario really started was when they got into it, and it was it was fabulous. I was really kind of sad there wasn't more that they ran out of time. Yeah, yeah. I, they should have got them in the castle sooner. Yeah, you know. yeah and, and I, I, it, it just depends on how you write it. Like with Tar Tartan Shores, you guys were originally facing two marrow, and then yeah. the reef sharks were going to steal your boat. Yeah. And, and just in my head mentally, and I'm not better, I, I've just got more experience. In my head, I'm like, this is not going to play well. We need to expedite it. Uh, and Reef Reeferton uh, is not in the write up at all. That was uh, oh, created. That was ad lib. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that, that's just one of those things where let's speed it up because you guys started to think, okay, we found a hand. Where's the body? And I knew two of you were in armor. And I'm like, please do not jump off the fucking reef and drown. <laughs> I would I hey, I would have been fine. That was the whole reason why I created that character. Well, Aerocall was had absolute shit rolls all night long. I, I, yeah. can't, I can't count how many times he tripped and fell on his face. Uh, uh, that, oh fair, my god, Scott's the beach running was hilarious. Yeah. Oh my god, the Baywatch references were awesome. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but yeah, he I, has the hair for it. That's true. Uh, but yeah, I, when I do mine, it, it, if you were to say purchase one or pick one up, uh, and then you watch the show and you read through the scenario, you're going to find a lot of different things. And that, I think, is the biggest key for any DM is uh, they just have to figure out what's working and what's not. Because I knew if I threw two marrow at you, it wasn't going to work. It was going to bog us down, and I didn't want to do that. I wanted you guys to hit as many things as you could. Uh, but that's, I mean... That's experience. I mean, yeah, you and, have and, so much experience doing it. Uh, a new DM isn't going to be thinking like that. But what yeah. I'm saying is, a new this DM's Friday not going to think of that. Perfectly. You know, <laughs> well, they're they're only going to think begin to end. And this is how we get there. They're mm -hmm. not going to improvise like you're doing. It's just like you know, it's yeah. like jazz, baby. You, yeah. You know. And, and I, I like to keep it at two hours because I think if you're watching the show, uh, you got other shit to do. And two hours is a major motion picture. I will say, however, both Blake and Kyle's scenarios would run exceptionally well in a convention setting with a four yeah. hour. I, I mean, and, and, and you know, I don't sell your tickets to Gen Con just yet. I Buy well, a seat I, at my table. I haven't bought mine yet. I'm not sure if they're going to go or not. <laughs> yeah, no. uh, we're running shows. We're running two of them, but I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I think all the scenarios run well. But with with my personal restriction of two hours. Um, they don't run well. Uh, yeah. I have, uh, I could do Taco del Toro. I could do Tequila Estates. Both games played super well in a four hour convention series. On this show, they would blow. Just absolutely suck. Um, so they you played know. really great as a campaign. Though, yeah. So make sure you pick up those uh, scenarios and throw them into your campaign. The Cursed mm -hmm. Baby doll, as Kyle well knows, is, is huge. Uh, the Brad searching through that orphan's <laughs> undergarments. <laughs> We're going to look through the baby doll through these undergarments. Uh, just you, man. <laughs> You turn around and you are the only one there except for the orphan looking at you while you're looking through underwear. 
Jesus, God, that was funny. Uh, folks, it's been an hour. Uh, it blows right through, uh, mostly because Carol is very long-winded and talks constantly. So hey. you know, we will try to work on that and maybe ditch her next time. Carol, right? You mean Carol? <laughs> sure, Carol. <laughs> uh, let's do final thoughts. We'll go in reverse order. Oh, God, that means Carol starts. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. Don't worry, I got Can you. We start the counter at four. Just make it easy. Count at four. Okay. All right, let's go. No, I'm gonna do this. Hold on, hold on. I got you. I got you. Firstly, talk over me, so I don't get it. Um, you know what? It. I don't know. I don't really have any good final thoughts, anyway. So, nah. What? But you had fun on the scenarios you played in, right? What's that? You enjoyed the scenarios you played. Oh well. I want to go that yes actually i i enjoyed the scenarios with you guys very much and i definitely am enjoying the campaign um it's really exciting and if you haven't watched it watch it start watching it, it, it the, all the episodes are archived uh it's fantastic <laughs> <laughs> what what did you get up and it's, it's what? Like, Oh, you'll just have to rewatch. <laughs> That's right. You can do that at the YouTube <laughs> or the Twitch archives. Timer right now. Uh, Kyle, <laughs> final thoughts. <laughs> uh, as a new DM, try to avoid the pitfalls of new dimming. Not everything has to survive, and not everything has to be incredibly hard. Some things should be easy. Sometimes an empty room is just an empty room. That's avoid. <laughs> Oh, avoid doors. That's the other thing. And water features. Uh, and water. David, final thoughts. Final thoughts. Okay, I'm going to quote the late, great Kenny Rogers. The gambler. You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, and know when to run. <laughs> so, I mean, keep that in mind as a DM. <laughs> wow, that was nice. No, just, just be prepared to in improvise. David, yeah. you shot me. Huh? You shot me. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Uh, not only did I shoot you, I freaking slit your throat. Yeah. So uh, nice. I rolled a one. <laughs> Folks, uh, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to buy our stuff, uh, tinyurl.com, RPG swag. If you want to chat with us on Discord, tinyurl.com, and Hobo Inc. Discord. And please, if you want to have a seat, you will not do any worse than any of us. Well, you Don't might forget do about the game on Friday. Oh, there, there is a game on Friday with Kyle. Uh, what level? Uh, I think it's fourth, but I might bump you up to six just for the hell of it. Do it. <laughs> oh no, it's actually sixth level. And uh, we've got uh, the standard game on Saturday, which is a one shot. Uh, I'll see if I can get another game in there. I've got a couple of urban scenarios I'm itching to do. One of them is an adaptation, which they will hate. Uh, but seriously, uh, if you if you want to alleviate some of your boredom, oh, of, Frank, is the is this the adaptation I kind of sent you? No, not the one. Oh, not the Walmart you... at the mall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not, not at the wall. I'm still working on my arson. Uh, but uh, seriously, folks, if you want to have a seat on the show, any of the shows, let us know. We will try and get you in there. Uh, as I try and produce this uh, steaming pile, everybody wave and say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. goodbye.